Hello, everyone. I'm Anna Winter. I'm very happy to invite you to join me as I look through some of my very favorite Met looks over the years. Particularly exciting at this time as we are getting ready to open in America the September 13th opening of the Met Costume Institute exhibition. So this first image is Bianca and Mick Jagger looking incredible. This was before I was involved with the museum back in 1974. So it shows you what an uh, iconic past the Costume Institute truly has. And if you think about Harry Styles being the muse for Alessandra Michele at Gucci today, I think one could say that Bianca Jagger was the muse for Holston. And if you look at this incredible picture, you understand exactly why. So this next image is Cher looking absolutely remarkable accompanying Bob Mackey, who is the designer of her dress. And it's particularly poignant for me to see this image because Cher was so gracious in being our performer at the last Costume Institute exhibition camp, where she looked just as amazing as she does in this photograph. This is from Rock Style in the late 90s. And who better to embody rock style than Liv Tyler and Stella McCartney? And Stella tells the story that she really had no idea what the Met Gala was and went to the East Village that afternoon and sewed these t-shirts herself and arrived on the red carpet and was, as she told me later, completely in shock. Uh, she, of course, was the life and soul of the party and this is the image that everybody remembers from that night. What's wonderful about the Met and the opening night is that people feel very fearless. And I think that gives them license to dress in a way that they might not normally. We definitely have seen our fair share of surprises and certainly this image was one of them. I think people were surprised to see Stella and Liv dressed this way, but I also think they very much enjoyed it and applauded it, that it was different and risk-taking and everything the rock style should be. This image is of the late Alexander McQueen with Sarah Jessica Parker. And Sarah Jessica Parker is the perfect Met guest because she takes the theme of the night unbelievably seriously and plans it out for months and months ahead. And she has spoken you know, with such passion and sadness and admiration for Alexander with this particular look because they planned it out meticulously. He flew over from London more than once. And she tells the very poignant story that she kept every single piece from this particular look, including all the pins and the scraps of fabric that were discarded during the fitting process. And this was one of those magical nights, maybe because it, the subject of the exhibition was Anglomania and the Brits liked to have a party and they liked to dress up. So this photograph of Blake Lively in Versace is from 2009. And the reason I chose this picture is I think it was the night that Blake Lively took the world by storm. Everybody was saying, who is that girl? Of course, we knew her from Gossip Girl, but I think that she had not reached the pinnacle of success that she later enjoyed. And this was a dress that certainly was worn to be noticed. And it was a wonderful, wonderful evening. Every year I think about who might be the right people to invite to be our co-chairs. And I decided for our American woman, the only option of course was Oprah Winfrey. And she was delightful and enchanting and magnificent. And standing in the receiving line as we do every year was so much fun because the guests were so overwhelmed to see Oprah that they would curtsy or faint or just be completely tongue-tied. And she was charming and gracious to everybody and she looked completely stunning here in her great friend Oscar de la Renta's navy evening dress. And afterwards she hosted what was, I think, the most memorable after party that we've ever had with Pharrell and Justin Timberlake and Oprah herself working the DJ booth. The party went on until six in the morning. 
This is Beyonce looking stunning in Ricardo Tichy for Givenchy. And of course with Beyonce, you're never quite sure if she's gonna turn up, but she knows her timing. She was by far the last person on the carpet. So it meant that she had the carpet entirely to herself, which was absolutely what she deserved. And she was certainly worth the wait. So I think in the modern era, when people think about the Met, there's no question in my mind that they think about this extraordinary dress that Rihanna wore for the China exhibition, China Through the Looking Glass. This dress must have been seen several billion times around the world. And when Rihanna arrived that night, I think the world stopped just to admire how extraordinary she looked. And similarly to other guests that understand timing and entrance making, I think Rihanna understood perfectly that this was an entrance making dress and that it was going to be the not only the, the dress of the night, but the dress of the Met through the annals of time. So she nailed it. This is also from China Through the Looking Glass, and we asked some of the Vogue editors who were helping out that night to wear these beautiful pajamas that Michael Kors made especially for the evening. And my particular favorite, of course, is Grace Coddington right there in the middle, because Grace, practical to the last, was so happy to be wearing this outfit because she was going straight from the Met to the airport. So now we're back to our favorite Met guest, Rihanna, who asked John Galliano to make this unbelievable outfit for her for Heavenly Bodies, which was an exhibition that really celebrated the influence of the Roman Catholic Church on uh, fashion. And he made this look for her in three different colors, in this cream that she chose to wear also in gray and in black. And we didn't know until the night which one she was going to choose. And I always remember that night, uh, there were a number of very important members of the Catholic Church who had accompanied the Vatican choir to perform at that evening and were dotted around the museum. And one of our guests went up to one of the most important maestros, I think the maestro who was actually in charge of the choir, who was in his very classic Roman Catholic uh, garb, and said, I really love your outfit. You really nailed the theme. But maybe Rihanna did it better. Chadwick Boseman did it better. He and Donatella Versace worked very, very hard on his extraordinary cape and suit that he wore also to the uh, Heavenly Bodies exhibition. And for those of us who work at Vogue, he was the only guest that people were talking about the next day. How great did he look? And going back to the idea of being fearless at the Met, I don't think that as much as we admire Frances McDormand and, and her classic sense of style, I'm not sure we think of her as someone who wears feathers on her head or an amazing aquamarine Valentino cape. So when she arrived at Heavenly Bodies, she also took the red carpet by storm because she was so out of her more traditional character. And what was magnificent about the way she'd look was how much she was enjoying it and how much fun she had the whole night. Pia Paolo really understood what she was trying to achieve and, and what worked his customary magic. So this last page was indeed memorable. I think two days or maybe just one day before the opening of camp, which was our last exhibition at the Met, Lady Gaga, who was one of my brilliant co-chairs for that night, called to say that she had an idea that she wanted to create performance art on the carpet because she felt that truly represented camp. I said, great, can't wait to see you there. I had no idea what she was going to do. The first I learned a little bit more about it was as she walked with extraordinary panache down Fifth Avenue and I started to see the images pop up on everybody's phones and I was lucky enough to stand at the top of the stairs to watch her memorable performance where she arrived in Brandon Maxwell and unveiled four outfits in front of the admiring crowd. A camp performance indeed. Thank you for watching. I look forward to 
you joining us on Monday, September 13th for In America, either there on Fifth Avenue or on our live stream. It's going to be a memorable night.